What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So we're bringing this video out right now because the Kizuna Clash is currently active and I think this is a good opportunity to talk about utilizing the Kizuna Insignia which is the material that you will need in order to exchange for items and characters on that Kizuna exchange. So hopefully this video helps you guys out in jumping into Kizuna and buying the best characters or items possible. So we have all of the characters that you can possibly purchase from the Kizuna as well as all of the super evolution skulls as well as of June 2022 of course as months progress more characters and items will be added to this uh, to this list but as for now these are the characters that we can get access to we're gonna rank them and give you guys my opinions on each of them and just determine which ones are worthwhile pickups and which ones are not start things off let's just jump into it there's a lot of characters here so we want to fly through this so we've got um, pretty bad characters here I mean this character's good, not really used too much. This Perispero is actually really good. So his support attaches to any Cerebral unit, and when that unit uses their special, it locks the slots of all your Cerebral characters for one turn. This is... I don't know if it's a must-get. It's pretty close, but I'd say it's, it's a very, very high-tier pickup. Really, really good. Um, this Margaret is fine. I mean, her support is okay. I'd say it's probably not used too much. Not really with this Bell Hancock. Uh... Like, Magellan's fine, but he's not really too great. Sabo isn't really used too much. Shirahoshi's also, like, kind of alright. Uh, Okiku's a pretty good pickup. Good utility, double special activation. Has good supports nowadays, considering we've had more characters release for the scabbards that attach to Okiku. So, actually a pretty decent unit. Um, I think Ace and Marco are okay. I wouldn't say they're great pickups anymore. I'd say if this was, like, a year ago, I'd probably rank them pretty high. But at this current point in time, I can't really suggest picking them up considering there's just so many other better units you would prefer to use over them, but they're just okay. Uh, Koala isn't really used too much. Uh, th this guy also not really used too much. Big Mom is okay. She actually has a really unique ability of removing beneficial effects, and there's not too many characters in the game that can actually do that. So having access to a character that can do it is pretty good. The next one, though, is Carrot, and Carrot isn't really used too much either. She does have a unique ability of removing a lot of enemies' defense up, if I remember correctly, and she's also an attack booster and a chain booster, but in a, again, in a lot of cases, you just have better units that you have access to over that. Now, Hancock and Luffy are very good. Um, I don't know if they are a must-get character because they are only really focused on boosting sign-in characters with their color affinity. One of the biggest color affinity units you can get access to. Free-to-play, full water matching slots. Just a really, really good unit. Um, so if you have the available insignia, I'd say like this is probably the best unit that we have looked at thus far. Kaido is terrible. He's basically a crappier version of Super Type Kaido. He is so bad don't even worry about it. Buggy's really good. I think that he is also like one of the top tier units you should maybe think about. Good utility and orb changing. Like he's just super solid. This guy unfortunately doesn't see a lot of play. Um, this Akainu and, and uh, Kizaru character, really interesting, has like a lot of really cool things built in this unit, but he just, you don't need him for content, unfortunately, but he's interesting. I think Kid's pretty good. Um, he has a really good free-to-play captain, and his special ability does end of turn damage, it gets rid of enemy defensive effects, you can use him to wave clear certain stages just for um, easier, faster farming. So he's pretty good. Uh, Hawkins is like just kind of okay. Now he's pretty bad, honestly. Now Hawkins, Hawkins is pretty bad. He doesn't really do much. He's got like a little bit of utility and like tanks damage from certain colored units. Not that good. Capone is okay. A little bit of orb changing, a little bit of an attack boost. Nothing too good there, but he's, he's okay. Uh, this guy's pretty good. Let's say this guy, but these gals are pretty good. Nami and Robin, pretty decent. King is not used too much. Dofi is not used too much. I think Katakuri is also a very good pickup. Not only is he a chain booster for multiple turns, he has orb changing and he's got utility. He's a Katakuri character, so he has a couple of okay supports and he's just a very solid unit. So I think Katakuri, very, very good pickup. But now this is probably the first unit that we've hit that I think is probably a must purchase, which is going to be the um, the Kuja Pirates. Now, remember, this is a character that actually super evolves. So not only do you want to get the character, you want to pick up the skulls as well, which is going to be pretty expensive of an investment. But this character upon super evolving has such an amazing special. Good utility, getting rid of defensive effects, an attack booster for shooter and free spirit, and a self-procking delayed conditional booster all in one unit. And has a pretty decent free-to-play captain on top of it. A very, very decent purchase. 
and then you've got Brook, the Mugiwara 56, decent utility and an attack and an orb boosting effect, pretty decent. Uh, you've got Jack here as well. Jack is another character that requires you to purchase super evolution skulls. He is pretty good though. He gives you color affinity and really good utility. I believe when he super evolves, it's like uh, five or six turns of debuffs. And then he's a color affinity boost to strength and then driven powerhouse, I believe. So pretty good. Then you've got Ivankov, who is pretty good. Uh, I actually used Ivankov recently in one of the arenas that had come out and um, just has a lot of really useful effects. Again, utility, orb change, and attack boost, pretty decent. You've got this Big Mom. I think big, this Big Mom is also another must purchase character. Now, this again is another unit you need to purchase the super evolution skills for. However, like special bind removal and removes another piece of utility, if I remember correctly. And also, a really good orb boosting effect to, I believe, Int Driven Powerhouse as well. So yeah, Big Mom is so good. Definitely worth the investment in my opinion. I think she's probably better than Kuja Pirates. Uh, she's so, so powerful. So at this current point in time, I think this is the best unit we've looked at at the moment. Rebecca is is okay. Um, has like a damage reducing effect, if I remember correctly. Chain boosting. I think a defense down conditional boost as well, if you're above full HP or something. So Rebecca is pretty good. I think that the Krieg Pirates are also okay. Unfortunately, the, the big thing about them that's kind of annoying is that they make block slots not reduce damage. So basically they treat block slots as as neutral slots when you activate their special, instead of them just outright just changing them into matching slots, which would have made him so much more valuable. So unfortunately, I don't think he's like god tier, but in terms of free to play, he gets rid of Bind and Despair, if I remember correctly, and he's a self-procking poison conditional boost. So he is okay, but he's nothing to really write home about. I think the Sanji Zor is also kind of good. The problem here is, is it's another Sanji Zor character. So there's lots of overlap with a lot of other characters you may want to be using in the game, but but have a pretty good special they're a block slot manipulator and they're a chain boundary effect and there's not that many free to play chain boundary focused units blackbeard blackbeard is the best unit like hands down if you're just picking up one character to max out blackbeard is the best kizuna character he is incredible he has like a multi-stage special and at level level three it's amazing because he gets rid of beneficial effects off of the enemy but also special bind remover uh defense down conditional booster like this blackbeard is amazing definitely the best kizuna character in my personal opinion from all of the experience that i've had at the moment he is really really good um, Chopper is also a pretty decent pickup. Again, a little bit of overlap because it is a Chopper character, but great utility once again. He removes a bunch of debuffs by five turns. So if you're lacking a good debuff remover, check him out. He removes like attack down and poison, and he's got a good support as well. So you may want to look out for that. And Orochi, Orochi's pretty bad. I mean, he's almost like this tier, honestly. He's just really not that good. So that's just the units, right? We have all of these super evolution skills to go through. Now, this really comes down to if you have the character or not. So when I talk about each of these characters here, I'm going to assume, hypothetically, if you had the character, where would I rank that super evolution skill? If you don't have the unit, you don't need to purchase the skill, quite obviously. So let's start with Sabo. I think that Sabo is just not used too much. Putting... Pudding is actually kind of interesting because she doesn't change that much with her super evolution. Her main gimmicks stay the same, it's just that when you do super evolve her, her captain ability becomes better, but she also removes bind and despair with her special, and you can technically make that be a double special activation. And that has come in clutch in a couple of scenarios, so I think that it's actually an okay pickup to super evolve Pudding, even though she isn't really used too much in content, but I think the super evolution for what it is is pretty decent. I think Jax is like really not really worth picking up because the main reason why you would want to super evolve him is just for the bigger numbers. But if you're using to XP farm, you don't really need to do it. So in my opinion, it's a pretty bad decision to waste uh, the Kazuna Insignia on Jack's super evolution skulls. I think Odin's is definitely a must purchase. If you have the unit, definitely super evolve him. He becomes way better, not only in regular content, but also for Pirate Rumble as well. Definitely worth the pickup. But then you got Yamato, like definitely worth the pickup. Remember, you probably want two Yamatos so you can have the Int one and also the Psy version, uh, both of which are amazing. I think the Psy version is definitely the one you want though. She's better in a lot more content and the fact that she is a, lot, a little bit better in PvP. She has better synergy with some of the PvP characters. So uh, it's definitely worth the pickup if you have her. Doflamingo, again, it, it's like, it's okay. Uh, it's a unit that gets a pretty decent super evolution, but it's not the end all be all. If you, if if you have him, you don't really need to super evolve him. He's still mono driven in a sense, so you don't really have to worry about him too much. Brook, 
yeah, look, he's, he, you just don't need to super evolve Brook. You're not really going to be using him in content. Same with Sanji, same with Zoro. Uh, people like this Blackbeard way too much. Like, this Blackbeard is really not that good. I really don't understand why people like him so much. Uh, I think Cracker actually is a pretty good pickup. Um, Cracker has a, a much better special. He does damage with his special. His captain ability obviously is better, but he's not really used for his captain ability. Uh, if you have him, it, it's, it's pretty good. He's a pretty decent upgrade to what he once was. Onami's is a pretty mediocre upgrade. I'm going to put her around here. No, it's actually pretty good because it does add color affinity. So it's had the color affinity, conditional boost, it's a damage dealing special, and uh, the, the cooldown reduction as well with her special ability. So Onami does get a pretty good upgrade, uh, but it, it's a character that doesn't really see a lot of play. I guess wherever you put Cracker, I, I mean, Nami's probably on the same tier as them. So I guess for now, I'll put them both a little bit lower than what I would probably put them. Yeah, I think I think you really got to focus up on the ones that are actually going to help you clear content. Onami is a good unit, but I think that some of the characters above might be a little bit more worthwhile in terms of purchasing. No, you don't need to super evolve Mihawk. Uh, Gemma Double Six are actually very good. They become amazing with their super evolutions. So if you have Gemma, yeah, I think picking up the skills to super evolve them is not a terrible decision. I think Komurasaki super evolution is also pretty good. I don't think it's as good as Germa's, but it's it's still a pretty decent super evolution. And Carrots is really good. I think Carrots is probably in the top tier. It just makes her so much more usable. The uh, Just the array of characters that you get access to, to build teams with her, it, it just makes her so much better. And obviously you can hybrid her up with the brand new uh, Dogstorm and Cat Viper that came out earlier on in the year. And the super evolution just makes her cap ability powerful her special ability was already still pretty decent uh, she has some pretty good supports as well i think it's it's definitely worthwhile purchasing but overall definitely focus more on these top characters if you are thinking about which characters to purchase first in the kizuna and then you could pretty much work your way down uh these are not like from number one number two etc but i mean i do think blackbeard is probably the best overall character to purchase and i think that the best super evolution skill is probably yamato's though don't discount odin because he does get amazing with that super evolution so keep that in the back of your mind and then obviously as we get down to these lower tiers you probably don't have to worry about these units but hey you know things may change in the future with uh, future character releases some of these characters might become a lot better than what they currently are right now but as it stands this is how i would personally rank all of the things you can purchase in the kazuna exchange but that's going to wrap it up for me thank you so much for watching guys and if you guys did enjoy the video make sure you go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button button down below but on that guys i will see you guys within the next video